Welcome back, everybody, for another episode of Cardano Minute News. <laughs> this is where I talk about Cardano and all things related. My name is James. I am the stateful operator for Maximum Mint with the ticker AMINT, A-M-I-N-T. And I'm also in the Plutus Pioneer program. Uh, we're working hard to develop on the Cardano network, and uh, we also uh, look for articles and news about what's going on in the Cardano world. So. Um, if you want to support us and you like this content, please stake on our stake pool, um, Maximum Mint. And uh, let's get started. So today I found a really cool article um, about leveraging community centers to bring Cardano adoption to the Democratic Republic of Congo. This is very neat because once we establish this, then we can start to see further development. These are kind of like the roots that we can establish that will start to produce um, users, programmers, and a use case for uh, Cardano in Africa. So the Cardano, let's read this article. The Cardano community is quickly growing. The Plutus Pioneer program is currently onboarding hundreds of developers. The Cardano Reddit recently broke 400,000 subscribers and there are presently over 500,000 staked addresses. Yet as IOHK's mm -hmm. recent Africa special highlighted, adoption across Africa remains a crucial component to realizing the full potential of the ecosystem. Surging adoption in the face of inflation, bootstrapping local communities across the continent is likely more towards realizing this Goal. Indeed, a Fund for Catalyst campaign is offering 50,000 in ADA to galvanize activity around this mission. If proposals can be successfully implemented, the campaign hopes to build and license several community centers. These outposts will onboard members of local community and contribute to the growth of DOAs and the broader ecosystem. Kanasha, the largest city and capital of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the DRC, is a natural candidate for one such center. Africa is experiencing a surge in cryptocurrency adoption. Over recent months, increasingly mobile connected users have sent 55% more small monthly cryptocurrency transfers. While trading is the dominant use in most developed regions, Africa is unique that many use the technology for commerce. This may be due to the relatively elevated inflation. Over the past 10 years, inflation rates in the five most populous countries, include the DRC, have typically ranged between 5 and 15%. That's high inflation. However, the DRC may be falling behind in terms of adoption. The country is a well-known source of precious minerals, particularly cobalt and coltan. Entrepreneurs have partnered with the government's blockchain-based supply chain solutions to the industry. The technology intends to help improve reliable information on the source of raw material to end users. However, according to proposal author Genti Samvura and Emmanuel Bakbrick, Sorry if I'm tearing up those names. Emmanuel Bakbriki, Bitcoin scams and other fraudulent activities led the government to regard cryptocurrencies negatively. As a result, officials have discouraged the adoption of the technology and banned its use. The situation is further exacerbated by ongoing ethnic conflicts in provinces such as Ituri. In some cases, residents have been forced to flee, resulting in food insecurity and a loss of livelihood and property. This is a shame. This is exactly what we're trying to stop by implementing the things that are going on down. Building a community in Kanash, Kanasha, Kinshasa. <laughs> Let me say that again. Building a community in Kinshasa. Uh, all things considered, the grassroots effort is needed to shift the tide. Proposal offer Genti Sambura and Emmanuel Bakbrick seek to breach the levy. Towards the end, they aim to create a local hub based in Kinshasa for developer and policymaker onboarding. The business center style community hub will consist of a small business office in a shared space rented on a six month lease. Organizers will gather local programmers to learn about protocol and brainstorm use cases for Cardano while providing basic Haskell, Plutus, Marlow, and Blocky training. The initiative also seeks to form partners with lawmakers, journalists, entrepreneurs, and other community members. The author further detailed their roadmap over the first three months of operation. After gathering a small group of developers, they will expand outreach to include lawmakers. They will organize blockchain business workshops and provide presentations of proposed use cases in the and the benefits of of distributed ledger technology. Finally, they will publish a video 
on local network television. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Connected proposals and the practical budget. The proposals author bring a relevant and unique skill set to the initiative. Together, they have experience teaching Haskell, family relations with local lawmakers, and experience in community engagement and outreach. However, Gently Samvera has supported up-to-date developers and the Argo app project, a mobile app for farmers that provides data on soil conditions. On the other hand, Emmanuel Favoriki is the West Africa Decentralized Alliance logistical coordinator based on based in Kinshasa. WADA works to form a network of developers and entrepreneurs using the Cardano ecosystem across Africa. Everything considered the budget request is 3,000 in funding. Local costs and rent comprise the most considerable expense at 2,000. Marketing, promotional, and promotional costs in the form of t-shirts, roll-ups, and media efforts will require a remaining 1,000. So what I'm seeing here is this is not going to be initially a very expensive thing to do, yet from the way I see it, this seems very critical. Um, because if we don't physically get people down there that are starting to create a uh, space where people can walk in as a regular person but leave as a developer for Cardano or somebody that can do something for the network, even market, advertise, um, spread awareness, educate, all of those things matter. We need to drop these hubs into Africa. And the better these hubs perform, the better Cardano will do in Africa. So to me, this is just epicenter critical. And so down here, if at the end of the article, there's a link for their um, idea scale uh, proposal. So I'm going to click on that link and here it is. Anyway, so we'll go back here. So it looks like, um, like I said, yeah, painting the office to show cryptocurrencies, prominent role for ADA, produce roll-ups, journalism, lawmakers, developers, communities, okay, metrics, even turnout statistics. So they are planning on doing some sort of trackability for auditing, um, which is really nice. And right now it looks like the first three months introduced small intimate group of developers to early access training. So they're kind of building their group. This seems like it's something that you really would want to vote on. Um, I think I'm gonna give this one a thumbs up. For me, um, I like this one, and uh, I think it is epicenter critical. Like, we need to have these establishments uh, rolled up. We can go into all of those things later. But uh, as far as this proposal is concerned, I'm definitely going to give it a vote, and I'm going to write some comments on there. So so this is what the proposal looks like. Um, this is a very good proposal. I think it's important. Uh, this one has closed at this time and so no nothing further needs to happen with it it is waiting on being voted because uh we're getting ready to vote on the fund four that's what all of the testing is for right now so uh this is just one of my favorites uh, keep an eye out on it um, i will probably be reporting back on this i want to follow the progress and see how these little hubs are doing uh, because i feel that they're so important uh, for the development and um a growth of cardano in africa if you guys feel the same, uh, put some comments down below. How important do you guys think it is that we create centers like this in key locations to start producing people that can uh, teach about the network, advertise for the network, um, program on the network? Uh, if you guys think this is a good idea, thumbs up and um, make sure you head down to Project Catalyst and start to look over these proposals. Fund five is being evaluated now. Um, you guys can start to uh, evaluate those proposals. We're getting ready to vote on the fund four. So the final votes are are getting ready to start pretty soon. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys are having a wonderful day out there. If you guys have any comments or questions, please put them in there. And if you need to contact me, like I said, I am the state pool operator for Maximum Mint with the ticker A-M-I-N-T, a mint. Um, please contact me if you have any questions. We want to say thank you again for IOH case funding. We were given 15 million in the initial funding round um, and that has moved to another state pool. So thank you IOHK for keeping us alive for so long. Uh, we just need more delegators now. We need to replenish those funds to get our state pool back up to a nice level. If you guys are looking for a reliable state pool, you guys just uh, check out Maximum Mint, ticker A-M-I-N-T. And uh, we're going to be producing a lot more videos trying to share awareness of what's going on in the community. So please follow us on Twitter and check out our website and you will hear from us very soon. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. This is James. Talk to you guys later. Bye.